didn't have this last time. Let's do it. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Board of Directors meeting for the Woodland Davis Clean Water Agency. Uh, we'll note 306 on June 15th. Um, we're going to start our meeting. We'll start with roll call. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Here. Here. Berg. Here. Director Angel Barajas. Here. And participating agency rep Kelly O'Day. Here. O'Day. Great, thank you. So we do have a quorum. Um, so we're going to move right along. We're going to jump into agency business. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number one is approval of the agenda and consent items. The only consent item on today's, uh, in today's packet is from April 20th, 2023. Um, I move the agenda and the consent items. I'll second. Thank you. We have a, a motion by Director Landsberg and a second by uh, Director Barajas. Any other comments, questions? Good to go. Do we need to do a roll call? Can we just do... All right, perfect. We'll just do a, a one fell swoop vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, motion carries. Thank you. We have an agenda. All right, at this point, we'll open up uh, public comment to anyone who is here uh, who would like to uh, make public comment on any item that is not on our agenda. Please feel free to come up and address the members of the board. No? All right, well, seeing none, we'll cl uh, close public comment and we'll move to uh, agenda item number three, Woodland Davis Clean Water Agency general manager update uh, from Tim and from our operations manager update from Stan. So I'll turn that over to Tim, thank you. I, I thank you. Um, I will start with the GM side of the uh, update and then turn it over to Stan for the operations side. It's our usual topics that we, we talk about at every meeting, water supply outlook going forward, uh, what we're working on for long-term water supply and then our capital improvements and operations update. Uh, water supply this year continues to look very good. Uh, the slide that's on the screen currently is the eight station index. That's really the uh, kind of the accumulation of water precipitation that has fallen in Northern California this year so far. Across the bottom of the screen are the dates and on the vertical axis is the cumulative rainfall amount. Right now, as of, as of two days ago, uh, these graphics are all from two days ago, uh, we're at 123% of average. Um, <clears throat> the top of the shaded area is actually the average uh, 30 year running average of precipitation. So the three lines below that are the for three previous years. We're actually pretty close to 2018, 2019, but a little bit below that year right now. The darker solid line is the current year precipitation. I think from now going forward, we're probably done with precipitation for the year. That's probably where, we'll, where we will stay. Uh, next slide, please. I wanna look real quickly at kind of the two largest reservoirs that supply us with, with water. Uh, first one is Lake Oroville. Uh, you must have seen this graphic before. This is a cumulative storage to date for Oroville, again, as of two days ago. Um, off the, on the bottom, bottom axis is dates, uh, and the vertical is, is a volume storage, or storage volume, sorry. Uh, right now, Oroville is at 100% of storage. Uh, there is no storage capacity remaining in Oroville. They're actually releasing water at the same rate that is coming in, and they'll continue to do that as long as snow is melting. Uh, next, please. This is a look at Lake Shasta. Uh, same graph at top of the shaded area is the average. The solid dark blue line is the day-to-day -day storage. Um, we've seen a very dramatic in increase in storage since January 1. Uh, Shasta right now is at 99% full. I don't think it can quite hit, hit 100, actually. Um, same thing, uh, Shasta is releasing water at the same rate that it is coming in. Um, so, it's, so overall water supply outlook this year is, is excellent. Uh, term 91 curtailment slide is next. Uh, you, this has been a while since we've seen this graphic because it's just been in, in place kind of for a long time. But uh, I'll, I'll walk through this graphic real quickly for, for, for people who have forgotten about it or are new to it for the first time. So this tracks, um, term 91 is the curtailment when it is in effect, basically shuts down our state water board water rate, which is our primary water rate. Um, typically it happens in summer months. Uh, basically term 91 curtailment can go into effect when supplemental reservoir releases are required to maintain water quality objectives in the Delta. So this is basically water supply for the, through the Delta, or flow rates for the Delta. Uh, when it's in the kind of the red, red part of the graphic, the top half, that's when uh, reservoirs are releasing supplemental water. When it's in the blue part further down, 
that's when the delta is in balance and basically natural inflow is meeting all the water quality objectives and no curtailment does any effect. The lighter blue line is what happened last year every day. The darker blue line is this year uh, beginning October 1. Uh, as you can see right now and, and pretty much all of winter since December 3rd it's been in the blue category. We've not had a curtailment since December 3rd. Right now it's still running between five and 10,000 CFS in the blue, in the, in the non-curtailment category. I, I did talk with MBK the other day, asked them to run some numbers on when, when or if they think we will have a term 91 curtailment this year. Uh, modeling indicates that probably around September 1 it could come into effect. There, there is still a lot of snow melting in the mountains um, and, and there's just a lot of water overall in storage that probably is gonna stay in the blue on the non-curtailment side all the way until September 1 this year. Uh, the last two wet years that we've had, 2016-17 and 2018-19, the same thing occurred in term 91 was never declared that year. So it's, it could be that we see no curtailment this year. We remain in our primary water right year round. However, there are some new staff at the State Water Board these days. They seem to be more interested in curtailments than they used to be. It may happen later on this summer. Uh, it's, it's a great year for water supply. However, that does create another kind of a challenge for us. Our, our contract for the water right purchase for the CVP water right, our 10,000 acre foot summer water right, does obligate the agency to allow Conaway Preservation Group to use whatever CVP water right we are not going to be using. So we actually have to forecast what we think we are going to use or not use. Um, they would like to use our water this year. Um, so we know that curtailment is not coming until later on. We were working with them on how much they can really use and it feels at this time we can let them use roughly half or 5,000 acre feet of our 10,000. Um, and then we'll work that out with them on whether or not we can release more later or not depending on if curtailment happens. We, we actually purchased the water right from them and that's one of the contract stipulations that between 2016 and 2039, that's how it has to work. We have to coordinate with them and we have to let them use whatever water we're not doing. We have to forecast what we're gonna use and coordinate with them on it. Uh, it, it's a, it was one of the purchase agreements, stipulations that we had. So we're working collaboratively with them and, and we really report our water rights collectively, our water right uses collectively so it's not we're telling them they can use roughly half of our water supply right now. Um, if we need to take some of that back later, we, we can certainly do that. And we're going to how we report that later on. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of long-term water supply, we, we are not considering a summer water transfer this year. Uh, we have no need to do that. Uh, we are considering doing a option agreement for this winter in case Term 91 comes in later on this year. Uh, and, and continues past November 1. We don't know that it will rain by November 1. That would be an option contract where we pay a relatively small amount of money to reserve water in case we need it. Uh, we have been working with South Sutter Water District and others on a longer term agreement. Uh, there is a bit of a complicating factor, actually a major complicating factor, uh, related to the stream flow depletion factor. That, that, if you recall, that was one of the contentious issues with the agreement we did with South Sutter Water District last year. Uh, that, is, that is a factor that the State Water Board requires in water transfer agreements that are related to groundwater substitution agreements. So how, how, how it works with South Sutter Water District and a lot of others is that if we buy water from them, they release the water from the reservoir that flows down rivers to us, and in turn, they pump groundwater to water their crops. The State Water Board is contending that some of the water that they are pumping from groundwater is actually released reservoir water that gets taken out of the rivers. That factor had been 13% in agreements. Last year, the state wanted 25%. We argued it down, got 13%. Uh, going forward, the state would like a much higher number than 13%. They've, they've done some calculations. I don't think they've released the final, uh, their final analysis yet, but it's, it's a number that's rather scary to anybody wanting to buy or sell water. So um, because it's unresolved, all the water buyers and sellers in the state really oppose what the state's trying to do. Uh, so Reclamation and several other water agencies are actually doing their own analysis on what should the stream flow depletion factor be. So I think this is going to be a rather large fight between everyone. Um, probably going to take a year or two, possibly longer to get resolved. So in the meantime, we're going to be limited to short-term agreements until this can work, get worked out. Because one of the 
one of the main things in the permit and uh, state approval of water transfer agreements is that they type in what should the stream quality policing factor be. And at this time, there's not going to be agreement on what that number is. So we'll be, we'll be doing short-term agreements for probably the next couple of years uh, until that gets worked out. We are still working with Sites Reservoir. Uh, we actually just received a couple days ago their water rights application for a review, so we're working on that right now. Uh, our agency is included in their point of diversion, uh, so that once they get completed construction and operational, we will have the ability to divert water from Sites Reservoir. We'll already be in their permits to do that. We are reviewing the water rights application uh, to make sure that their diversions do not impact Term 91 and negatively impact the agency. And we just got this, what, I think Monday, Monday this week, maybe Friday. So really recently, so we just started on that right now. Um, we are not, I don't think we're, we're likely to be even invited to be an, an official partner of Sites Reservoir. Uh, there's a lot more people looking for water than there is water available. And, uh, but they do have the ability to do a transfer program where basically we could work with somebody who is a partner and buy some of their water when they're not using it. Um, this again is a long-term thing. It's not, it wouldn't even be possible for at least the next 10 years. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. I will turn it over to Stan for the capital side. All right, thanks. Just a couple slides here from, from the op side. So uh, one note, the transformer that was damaged and needed to be replaced is scheduled to be replaced next week. Um, that's been delayed a few weeks now, but uh, they're, they're gearing up to replace it next week. It is a refurbished one, not brand new. Due to uh, time delay in getting a new one, uh, they did have to go with a refurbished unit uh, at this time. Uh, then we have, as we've noted for a number of meetings, some joint intake projects that we'll be doing over the next year. Um, the roof access, uh, access to the screen cleaner and, and uh, for maintenance, uh, and then replacement of that wire. Um, we have, just as a note, we have engaged with the area manager um, for Jacobs to, uh, to assist in gaining some horsepower and, and resources to, to help uh, the project manager in, in procuring these uh, projects over the next year. And then just as a quick update, so we've averaged around a little over 17 million gallons being diverted per day. Uh, Woodland, Davis, UCD, you can see the splits there. Um, and then all, all of our water quality requirements have been met, uh, and those reports are posted to the agency website as normal. Uh, and then we are diverting under the primary water right, as Tim has mentioned and gone through. So uh, that was a quick update for ops. Happy to take any questions you may have. Yeah, thank you, Tim and Stan. Appreciate it. Any questions from my colleagues for Tim or Stan? One quick question, Stan. So with the transformers that, that we had installed, one of the backup ones that we had, right, when that went or not? We so no, so we have been, uh, so the way the system, the way the plant's operating is you have, you have a side A, side B from a power perspective. So they had to, uh, the, um, the contractor that does the electrical um, maintenance and improvements had to move some of the wiring so that we were using an alternate transformer to power the equipment. This is replacing the one that we had to remove. And, and so we'll be back to, to full transformers, if you will, yes, uh, after this next week, so. All right, perfect, thank you. All right, if we have no other questions here, we'll open up to, to public comment. Anyone in the public wanna make uh, any public comment? All right, seeing none, we will uh, close agenda item number three and move on to agenda item number four. Uh, review and consider approving the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. With that, I'll turn it over to Tim. All right, thank you. Um, next slide, please. For our operating budget really consists of two main categories. We have the operation and maintenance category, which is basically all costs related to treating and delivering water, including permits, oversight, and everything. And then the other category is our debt and reserve payments. These typically are not changed uh, through the operation or through the paying off of the loans. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so our current proposed budget, uh, con for consideration today has a total amount of $21.28 million. Uh, I'll walk through the categories and, and what's in each one in, in a few moments. I did look back at our last wet year of 2018-19 and the budget we had that year was $20.1 million. It's really five years later in time, it's about a 5% increase in budget, so we're actually very consistent, um, if, any, if anything a bit lower than what we did back in 2018-19. Um, so it, it is, I think that was a comment from the board meeting last time, and it's how does this match with previous budgets, and actually is consistent with the last wet year we had. Uh, next, please. So the O&M budget category, uh, the vast majority of cost in that is directly related to operation of the water treatment facility and the joint intake. 
Uh, $5 million of that is what we pay directly to Jacobs under both the fixed and variable costs. Uh, the variable cost is really related to how much water we produce, and the fixed is, is the, really the fixed cost salaries and, and that kind of stuff. Um, we do pay electricity and chemicals separately. That's about $3.6 million in total. We are expecting about a 10% increase in electrical costs again this year, on top of the 10% we had last year. Uh, but one thing I would like to note, though, we, we do start using WAPA power January 1, 2025. So hopefully next year's budget has a bit of a decrease in electricity costs compared with what we've seen in the last few years. And then um, our, the, the next category is a smaller number. It's basically several smaller things, uh, extraordinary expenses, that's in case anything goes wrong uh, in terms of contracts, um, incentives to Jacobs for, for good behavior, and then uh, certain repair and replacement expenses and permitting fees, water rights fees. Uh, those have been climbing significantly, significantly over the past few years. We do include a rather small uh, amount of money for a supplemental water purchase. That's in case we do something for this winter, an option agreement, uh, some upfront funding, and then in case we need to buy some water this winter. It should be an El Nino year this year, but that is not a guarantee it's wet, uh, especially in November. So it's, it's basically risk management is what that is. Uh, next slide, please. Continue, continuing on the O&M category, we have about $160,000 in the O&M oversight. That's basically agency working with West Hills primarily on oversight of the contract. Uh, water supply and permits. Um, one thing I always like to point out is we, we do a tremendous amount more reporting to DWR in the State Water Board than we ever have before. Uh, when we started operating, we reported once per year to the State Water Board, never to DWR. Now we report to DWR every two weeks and the State Water Board every month. State Water Board permit reporting is nine pages and they seem to change it every four months. I'd just like to complain about that a little bit. Um, but that went from being a very minor part of our job to something every two weeks we have to do. Oh, sorry? <laughs> and uh, so the other part is water rights support. Um, as I mentioned, we're reviewing site supplication. There are, there are seemingly always things with the water rights that we need to be looking after and then looking into um, supplemental water purchase investigations to keep us in operations when needed. There's also another new uh, report we have to do every year, annual water supply demand assessment. That's, that's a new one, I think it started last year. That, that takes some doing to get completed. And then we did include a rather small budget for EIR addenda in support of any water rights transfers. I think we plan on two of them in the next year. Uh, next category, or next slide please. Uh, agency administration, the biggest piece of this item is insurance. Uh, ins insurance had a rather large increase again this year. Um, and the rest of them are all pretty much the same for uh, basically agency staff work, uh, treasurer and accounting services, legal counsel and, and miscellaneous things. Operations, con operations contingency, that's something that we maintain every year. That's in case something goes wrong at our facilities that we need to take care of. Uh, we have to, to date never used that money. Uh, so that simply result rolls over year to year. Uh, next slide, please. Under the debt and service, debt service and reserve payments, uh, th that's what we pay every year. Woodland has a reserve payment of $665,000 per year. That actually will sunset in about three years. So in about three years, Woodland will be finished paying off the reserve payment. Uh, principal and interest payment for Woodland and Davis will continue at th those rates for several more years. Uh, next slide, please. I um, wanted to talk a little bit about comparison of this year's budget versus last year's budget. Um, the graphic on the screen shows an actual overall reduction, although that uh, under the O&M category, that included the five million plus dollars that we spent last year on water purchases. Uh, sorry. Real quickly, I we weren't able to figure out how to how to do it. At, that one, it still keeps coming up like the. Yeah, I, I, can, I can read through the numbers. So our, our mid-year budget, if I can see this far. <laughs> um, what does that say? Our, I think it said the mid-year budget was 13,207, or 13,207,000. Our mid-year approved budget this year, our operating budget for next year uh, under the O&M category is nine point, just under 9.2 million. So it's showing a reduction of $4 million compared to this current fiscal year. However, we, we spent a little over $5 million purchasing water, so it's really a million dollars so increase. The next four categories are essentially rather minor increases and decreases. Uh, the O&M oversight category last year was 192,000. This year, 158,000, so a reduction of about 
Uh, permits of water supply, uh, last year 181,000, this year 248, so an increase of about $67,000. Agency administration was, I think it says 571, and uh, this current year budget is 617, which is an increase of about $45,000. Oh, thanks, Josh handed me something that can read a bit easier. And uh, so I think, and then I guess the last one is the operations contingency. That's essentially, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a decrease, but it's essentially flat. It was four, it's 463 last year, 409 this year. Um, but that really just rolls over year to year, and there's no change in debt service payments. Uh, next slide, please. So walking through the, the comparison between the two, uh, last year's budget and, and the proposed budget, uh, as I mentioned, it's about $4 million lower. However, it's really about a million dollars higher because of the uh, water, tr water transfers we did last year, if you, if you subtract that out. Um, things that have increased this year is electricity, chemical, and variable and M costs. Primarily, electricity, a roughly 10% increase. Chemical costs had been going up at about 20% per year still. Um, we're trying to track that down. We, in the first five or so, or five or six years of operations, we were able to have an annual contract for chemical supply. Last two years or so, we've only been able to do quarterly price contracts. Uh, and that's, that gives the suppliers a lot more flexibility on changing the price for us. So that's, we're still dealing with that. That hasn't, hasn't quite settled down yet. Agency oversight budget is $34,000 lower than last year. That's primarily due to basically refining of things we hadn't really um, spent in past years. We do have budget items in there for agency support for any of the partners and, and, and several smaller things. So every year we kind of cut that back a little bit. We keep them in because we may need them, but a lot of times we don't actually use some of those budget categories. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next one, permanent water supply budget is $67,000 higher. Um, we did increase budget a little bit for water supply, uh, water supplemental water I investigations, primarily to support a longer term agreement. We may be asked to participate in some of the modeling for stream flow depletion factor. Uh, we haven't had that conversation yet with anyone, but that's something that, that could be happening uh, soon. And we did reduce budget a little bit for water rights support and water supply EIR addenda, but those are rather minor. Uh, agency admin budget, $46,000 higher, uh, primarily driven by higher insurance costs. And, and everything else is very minor or unchanged. Uh, under contingencies, essentially in change, there's, there's a slight difference in number, but I, I would not really worry about that one. Uh, debt and reserve payments are the same. So overall, the, the revenue sources for, the, for, for funding the agency budget, you notice the revenue total is $409,000 lower than the proposed budget, and that's because we're not, we're not planning to collect the, con the contingency amount from the partners. We just rolled it over from previous year. Um, in total, Woodland's share of the agency's budget is about $11.6 million. City of Davis, about $8.3 million. UC Davis, just under $600,000. RD 2035, 340,000, and then uh, $35,000 from the RNR fund. Uh, one thing I would like to note that we did look at, um, originally we had planned to replace the filter screens this year, and uh, Jacobs looked into it. The screens actually have about three more years of life remaining. We don't have to replace them now, so we were gonna do a rather expensive capital project this year on the water treatment plant, but that now got pushed back about three years. So otherwise the budget would have been a bit higher than it is. Uh, so the next, there are a few actions for the board to consider is one to adopt the agency's f next fiscal year budget and then to uh, consider approval of the task orders which are West Yost and ESA. And I can also take any questions or well, Stan and I can take any questions. Yeah, thank you Tim. Appreciate that. Uh, I'll bring it back to my colleagues. Anybody have any questions for Tim or Stan regarding the budget? Director Landsberg. Are, are part of the budget. How much of that do the uh, ratepayers come up with? What's the contribution of the ratepayers? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is good. Done that from back here. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Tim or Stan? Sure. Director Brahas. 
Yeah, there was a slide during the presentation that said, um, it compared Woodland's usage, is it uh, MGD versus Davis and UC Davis? Um, that, that's per day, right? But yes. per year, what is it? it does, who consumes more water? It, it really depends. Um, typically, Woodland does. Uh, the pipeline, the way the agency was set up is that the, the, the capacity of the water treatment plant is, eight, is a total capacity of 18 million gallons per day to Woodland and 12 to Davis and UC Davis combined. So basically, the water that goes to Davis right now is capped at 12 million per day, and Woodland is capped at 18. So the way we're operating right now, um, I don't know what Davis is running at, but Woodland's running at about 14. And Woodland actually runs on pressure system, on pressure, so the water treatment plant adjusts flow to meet whatever Woodland's using at that time. So in the mornings, it can go all the way up to 18, and then later in the day, it drops to like 10, but the average right now is around 14 <coughs> for Woodland. Yeah, and we're, we're averaging around uh, we basically, in the summer, Davis would take the full 10.2. 1.8 million gallons uh, per day is allocated to UCD. Um, so f for most of the summer, we're taking pretty close to 12 million gallons uh, coming down the pipe. Uh, and then we'd augment with our groundwater to make up the difference. We average, in the summer, around 15 million gallons uh, as an average day. So we'd, we'd pump some groundwater to augment uh, the surface water coming in. Okay. That's it. Thanks. I think I would I would add the one big difference I think with with uh, between Woodland and Davis is Woodland does have the aquifer storage and recovery, so they do have the ability to put three to four million gallons a day. About four and a half. About four and a half million gallons a day of surface water into the ground um, that Davis presently doesn't have. So that also adds to some of the demand from Woodland uh, yeah. that Davis doesn't see. Yeah, it changes a bit throughout the year. In winter months, as Dan said, Woodland Woodland would use about ten million gallons per day. Davis uses around five. In summer, it, it depends on what our water rights are. This year, Woodland will be using a bit more than Davis. Last year, we used exactly the same because we were operating on purchased water when we split that 50-50. So every, every year is going to be about, is, every year is going to be a bit different, but typically Woodland uses a bit more. So is that why the costs are, are higher for Woodland than yes. using Davis? Um, the costs are a bit higher for Woodland because of higher water usage, but also because of the loans are configured differently. Woodland's debt service is much higher than Davis's debt service is. And, and that's because Woodland has a 20 year, when we, we worked with the State Water Board, actually CDPH at that time, on the financing, and they couldn't quite give us all financing from the same pot of money. So what was worked out is that Woodland took a 20 year loan at 1.79% financing. Davis took a 30 year loan at 1.9% financing. So Woodland's loans are higher than Davis's because we're, we're a large, Woodland is a larger share of the water treatment plant. Um, but our financing is also quite different. So the, the big difference is um, debt service. So we have about nine years left to pay that off, Woodland does? No, we have about 13. 13? Uh, the debt service payments did not start until 2017, 2018. Oh, okay. All right, it, was, it was about six months after we completed construction and closed out the contracts. Okay. Thank you. Random. So why don't we pump water into wells? So we're, we're potentially getting there. Uh, we're, we've done the preliminary study, which will Got be it. back in front of Council uh, Davis City Council pretty soon, uh, and then we'll we'll probably have a second phase of testing, and then um, potentially recommending a capital program to to start ASR. I got, I got to answer. You're not progressive enough. <laughs> <laughs> God, I know you. I, I, softball going on up here. Oh Ask man. Yeah. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will say that the, the <laughs> EIR for the project did contemplate uh, ASR for Davis as a preliminary look. So, so from an EIR perspective, it's contemplated. All right. Thank you, Stan. All right. Do we have any other questions um, for Tim or Stan? All right. Seeing none, we'll open up public comment. You want to make your way all the way down here? Suspense, you know, no, <laughs> no more public comment. All right. With that, we'll close public comment. And then do we have, is the... The, the uh, consultant task orders, is that a, the next agenda item? So do we need to move forward? It? Yes. So the board action here, we're just adopting the budget first? Or do you want to do them together? Uh, yes. Yeah, just adopting the budget first. first. Okay, great. So with that, I will entertain a motion for um, to adopt the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion by Director Veitla and a second by Director Landsberg. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item, uh, considering the 23-24 contract task orders with consultants. And that's 
to you, Tim, I assume, or who? Yeah, yeah, just real briefly. Right. So there are, there are two consultant agreements before you for consideration. West Yost has been the agency's engineer since the beginning of the agency. Uh, so the task list that before you exactly matches the budget, and it's several, several rather small categories that they help us out with, everything from splitting the power bill to uh, ensuring contract compliance and anything else we may need going throughout the year. ESA's contract amendment, ESA has also been the environmental consultant since the formation of the agency, and that their task really includes, uh, it includes two things, uh, up to two EIR addendums for supporting water transfer agreements, and then also permitting for some erosion control work at the joint intake. Um, you may recall that we had been planning a project at the joint intake facility to repair some erosion on the south side of the facility. Uh, that didn't happen last year, COVID, other, other things, but this year now our permit ran out of time. So we have, to, we have to spend basically this year getting a time extension on our permit so we can do the work next year. So that's, that's also included in the ESA's contract. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Tim on the um, consultant task orders for West Yost or ESA? All right. Seeing none, we'll open up public comment. No public comment. We'll close public comment. I'll bring it back uh, for um, a motion for agenda item uh, number five. All right, we have a motion by Director Landsberg, a second by Director Veitle. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, seeing none, we'll vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. All right, we're going to move on to agenda item number six, the selection of chair and vice chair for fiscal year 2023-2024. And then with that, I'll turn it over to Tim. Yeah, so every, every year we, we um, select a new chair and vice chair. Uh, typically, it alternates between the city of Woodland and the city of Davis for who is chair and vice chair. I believe Tom is up next for the city. Tom. Yeah, Tom. yeah, yeah. So Tom, Tom is up for consideration. Tom Stollard is up for consideration for the chair for next year, and I'm, I think Bapu would be for City of Davis, the vice chair. Great. I'll make a motion um, for Tom Stollard to be the the chair of the Woodland Davis Clean Water Agency for fiscal year 2023-2024. And I'll move that our member Bapu like to. Become the vice chair for the next year. All right, we have a motion on the floor um, for Tom Stollard to be the chair and uh, Director Veitla to be the vice chair. Second. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. We have, we have motion by uh, Chair Chapman, second by Director Landsberg. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will move to agenda item number seven. Okay, uh, the next item is the long range calendar. Uh, Michelle, can you tell us what the uh, next board, September 21st. 21st is our next board meeting? I know. I'm so sorry, I can't make it today. Sorry, we can't make it larger, but September 21st is the next agency board meeting. It will be in City of Davis. All right, thank you. Does anyone here have any um, items they would like to put on or add or have discussion around with the long range calendar? What? Yes, yeah, solar, um, solar yeah, is, that is on there for September. Perfect. Yeah, one item we wanted to say, we did continue that from this meeting. Um, we, we want to do a little more aggressive look at not just solar, but more of a distributed energy um, resource, which is something we're looking at. Um, so it's, it's a little more involved than just the solar look, so we pushed it so we'd have some more information. So. Great, thank you. And we did also review the WAPA contracts, and uh, under the WAPA contracts, we have obligations for base load purchasing, which is like 25% of what the water treatment plant uses. So we're free to do solar up to around 75% of our power needs, which that would require something like 10 acres, so I don't know if we can quite do that anyways. But <laughs> So there, there is not a conflict with... Um, using solar in addition to WAPA power. Um, the only thing, if we use more than 75%, we would be paying for base power that we're not using, so we probably don't need to do that. Their WAPA base power rate is incredibly inexpensive. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment on the long range calendar? All right, seeing none, we'll move, uh, we'll close public comment and move on to agenda item number eight, 
Uh, board member comments. Any of my colleagues have any comments today? Not today. I was at a SACOG meeting this morning, and that agenda item took about 25 minutes. So thank you for <laughs> <laughs> it's 29 elected officials, and you open up open mic, and you, you know, can't help themselves. So I appreciate your, your brevity. Uh, um, all right. So with that, we're going to move to agenda item number nine, uh, closed session, um, conference with legal counsel. For this item, 